So you can see the motivation. A 10 times reduction in footprint, a 10 times reduction in energy, and a massive reduction in investment. It's the most abundant element in the Earth's crust after oxygen. Um, and it happens to store nine times more lithium than graphite, which is the typical anode material in, in lithium ion batteries today. Tesla revealed at the Tesla Battery Day event. In recent years, the demand for higher battery consumption has not yet been met, which could be unlimited for a better battery nowadays. There have been breakthroughs that could be the next step in battery technology. Elon Musk also revealed that it would be improved with 500 watt hours per kilogram. But besides that, it enables extreme fast charging capabilities of just six minutes a charge and a range of 600 miles or more. So how does this new battery integral in changing the industry. Let's discuss this new battery technology through today's episode. But before I begin, please show us some love by subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so you'll never miss out on future updates of the EV and green technology industries. Now let's get started on today's episode. Silicon anode batteries are an extension of widely used lithium ion batteries. Early generation lithium ion batteries used lithium as the anode material that was replaced by silicon ions for carbon or graphite in the next generation of battery technology. But how much does this new battery cost? Silicon anode battery production is expected to cost less than 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour by 2025. Meanwhile, lithium battery costs $134 per kilowatt hour. This technology improves better battery performance. For example, the Tesla Model Y for 2023 has a battery size of 75 kilowatt hours, but if it uses silicon anode batteries, it would only cost $7,500. That would save you a budget of $2,550 because lithium batteries costs $10,000 and $50 toward the total cost of the vehicle. The price of a battery is mainly determined by materials. Overall, the cost of a silicon anode battery is much lower than that of its predecessors. Price reductions of materials have caused the price of batteries to fall fast in recent years and the cost decreases are predicted to continue. In other words, the production cost of a silicon anode battery is relatively inexpensive compared to other types of batteries. This cost is lower than that of even graphite batteries and is comparable to that of the lithium ion batteries. Additionally, the researchers used silicon nanowires and fused them directly onto commercial graphite. This method can cut the cost of manufacturing batteries by more than 30%. It is a good solution for battery companies as well as consumers to save in expenses on their financial budget. But until now, why is the silicon battery rated the highest capacity in the industry? Other than lithium, silicon anode batteries have the highest volumetric capacity at 9,786 milliampere hours per cubic centimeter, which is three times higher than lithium, with its low volumetric capacity of 3,271 milliampere hours per cubic centimeter. Additionally, voltage is discharged by silicon at an average 0.4 volts, which finds a stable balance between avoiding the plating process and retaining a reasonable open circuit voltage. It's less than nearly 10 times when the general rating of the lithium battery voltage is 3.7 volts. Aside from that, a silicon anode battery would offer 120 hours in running time, which is totally higher by 15 times compared to a lithium ion battery that only has eight hours. And for real world applications, the silicon anode batteries have the highest aerial capacity. Silicon nanoparticles and silicon encapsulation are the two best methods to increase efficiency without any problems. But how can silicon anode batteries charge to such a high capacity? The most impressive improvement of the silicon anode battery is the extremely fast charging capabilities. We've demonstrated that we can charge to 80% in under six minutes. Whereas for this level of the battery, the lithium ion batteries used in Tesla Model 3s take up to 40 minutes at 220 volt charging, which is 34 minutes longer than if it were a Tesla Model 3 outfitted with a silicon anode battery pack. Moreover, Tesla figured out that one small change in the battery should increase the vehicle range by 20%. There is a hypothetical display of this increase in the Tesla Model Y, with its range increasing from 316 to 379 miles. And this discovery is also similar in the Model 3, with its range increasing from 250 to 300 miles, the Model X from 351 to 421 miles, and lastly, the Model S from 402 miles to 482. This is only possible due to the structure of the silicon nanowire anodes. 
The nanowire structure has relatively straight and open pores compared to graphite anodes, thus the anodes and electrons can travel a straight path which leads to a very fast diffusion process and extremely fast charging capabilities. Therefore, consumer electronics will last 30% longer per charge than normal by using silicon anode batteries. But what about the energy density of the battery and are there any outstanding features for it? There have been breakthroughs that could be the next step in battery technology. Using silicon instead of graphite could lead to batteries with 20 to 40% higher energy density. I silicon because it has 10 times the capacity for lithium compared to graphite. In fact, silicon batteries have reached the highest gravimetric capacity at 4,200 milliampere hours that is calculated higher than lithium by 372 which has a humble valuation of gravimetric capacity at 3,828 hours. Additionally, the researchers announced that silicon anode batteries have high energy with 500 watt-hours per kilogram, which is equivalent to 1,300 watt-hours per liter, having an energy density range between 260 to 270 watt-hours per kilogram and 10 times that of lead-acid batteries ranging from 50 to 100 watt-hours per kilogram. Moreover, the use of a silicon anode battery maintains 80% of its capacity after 500 charge and discharge cycles. They allow for faster charging and discharging, improving energy density. On the flip side, unlike carbon, silicon has some inherent traits, like the lattice structure expansion by as much as 400%. It actually takes just one atom of silicon to store four atoms of lithium. And by contrast with graphite, with carbon materials, it takes six carbon atoms to store one lithium atom. So it's 24x atomically advantaged compared to, to carbon. The difference is made by forming the silicon into porous nanowires arranged like a kind of forest with shorter wires in between. Therefore, the silicon is able to tolerate swelling and resist cracking, extending the cell life of silicon anodes. So as you can see, there are many advantages to the energy density of silicon anode batteries, but how do the researchers use technology like this to make advancements? In order to achieve the best possible performance for a silicon anode battery, the researchers use an ionic liquid and a silicon anode. The silicon anode acts by a silicon ion, while the counter electrode is a small disc of lithium metal foil. The two are pressed together at a high pressure of 120 megapascals. The resulting cell is known as a two electrode cell. The Pacific Northwest National Laboratory team has developed a scalable process for the preparation of micron sized porous silicon. This technique produces high yields of porous silicon while maintaining a consistent temperature during the etching process. It also allows the etching agent to be recovered and reused. The team has also developed a localized high concentration electrolyte specifically designed for silicon anodes. This formulation significantly reduces leakage current and extends the cycle life. The goal of the program is to produce a silicon anode battery pack system with 235 watt hours per kilogram with a 235 watt hour per kilogram capacity. Capacity. This is equivalent to 15 years of calendar life and 500 cycles of discharge. But in order to produce this battery, where are its resources coming from? Silicon is friendly to the environment and the second richest in the crust of the earth, so there's no sort of scarcity issue. There are also environmental benefits to switching from graphite, which is mined out of the earth and then refined. China produces the world's largest supply of silicon, with an estimated 4.5 million metric tons in 2019. Behind them is Russia, which produces 600,000. The US only produced about half of that, at 320,000. What are the safety aspects of silicon batteries, and are there any upsides to them? The remarkable characteristics of silicon make it the most capable candidate in the battery industry. If we use silicon instead of graphite, it could result in safer choices. Silicon anode batteries have a variety of safety features. They include a positive temperature coefficient, or PTC device, that protects against high current surges, a circuit interrupter that opens the electrical path when the excessive charging voltage is reached, a safety vent that allows gas to escape in the event of rapid pressure increase in the cell, and an electronic protection circuit external to the cells that open a solid state switch at 4.30 volts. Finally, when the temperature of the exterior reaches 90 degrees Celsius, a fuse cuts off the current flow. 
Solid-state silicon batteries are a promising alternative to lithium-ion batteries. They can store more ions than conventional graphite-based anodes, and unlike graphite-based batteries, silicon-based batteries feature a higher energy density. However, some existing lithium-ion battery manufacturers are using a small portion of silicon in their batteries, which limits their performance. By contrast, GDI's approach uses 100% silicon in its batteries, resulting in much better performance and reduced risk of lithium dendrite formation. Moving on, how can silicon anode batteries be applied into Tesla's EVs? Tesla definitely confirmed that we have silicon in, in the cars that you're all in right now are involved highly engineered expensive materials uh, in, in the scheme of things. Now, they're still great and they enable some of the benefits of silicon, they just don't enable all of it and they're not scalable enough. Actually, the first production of the Tesla Model S vehicle had 5% silicon mixed into the graphite, and until now, most companies still remain at that 5-10% to range. Nowadays, however, Tesla is using a whopping 10-15% to of silicon, adding it into the anodes of the battery to boost capacity and energy density. The reality is that all cars are affected by extreme temperatures, but EVs are particularly susceptible to extreme heat or cold weather. For Tesla's electric cars, the battery performs best when it is within 20 degrees Celsius and the reaction increases from 122.22 to 127.07 degrees Celsius. Therefore, silicon anode batteries can work well at much higher temperatures than 2.3 times when compared with lithium batteries. Since the lithium battery has a safety level only from 55 degrees to about 80 degrees Celsius, silicon anode exhibits better rate capability resulting from faster electrochemical reactions and fast ion migration in the electrolyte and electrodes. In temperatures above 80 degrees Celsius, the cell begins to experience damage and anything above 130 degrees will result in the constituent parts of the cell melting and potentially starting a fire. The side reactions in this case become severe, resulting in a fast capacity decay. On the other hand, to have such a battery, the producers used both platforms and both models in each platform, with all of them using the same inverter that uses 24 silicon carbide devices, which have two silicon carbide die in each device package. These 48 silicon carbide devices have a 400 volt system at a simplified 160 kilovolt ampere power. In recent years, Sila Nanotechnologies, which was founded in 2011 by a group of ex-Tesla battery engineers and a Georgia University materials science professor have been working on silicon anode technology, which was first developed at Georgia Tech. They spent the last decade developing materials and next generation silicon anode chemistry for lithium ion batteries called nanocomposite silicon. And for the last part of today's episode, what is the outlook looking like? So I think it's now ready for the industry to really take it to the next level in terms of scale up the production for silicon anode batteries. In the final quarter of 2022, startups raised nearly half a billion dollars. The global market size for silicon anodes is expected to grow from $1.2 billion in 2021 to over $208 billion by the end of 2031. So I think it's now ready for the industry to really take it to the next level in terms of scaling up the production. It really ups the game because the energy density and the capacity of the battery is not increased only by a couple percent, but by leaps and bounds. The graphite anode that was invented and won the Nobel Prize and launched in 1991 is the anode that powers your electric car, and this technology is really the first that can replace that entirely and is commercially ready to go. Additionally, the Biden and Harris administration driving U.S. battery manufacturing by launching the American Battery Materials Initiative to strengthen critical mineral supply chains made an investment of $2.8 billion to boost domestic manufacturing. Another promising development of lithium-ion batteries is the development of anodes made of 100% active silicon. In addition to Enovix, Amprius is also pursuing this technology. The company is developing EV batteries with a low-cost silicon nanowire anode. Moreover, it has also secured federal funding for its project. To catch up with this trend, numerous companies including Sila, Enovix, Innovate, and Angstrom Materials are currently trying to build high-performance silicon anode batteries. In conclusion, the silicon anode battery is ushering in the new era of the battery industry and is also a potential market for many large companies who already have stakes in it. Do you believe that a silicon anode battery is the best option among other types? Will silicon anode technology go into mass production and apply in all devices in our life? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, 
please leave us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ring the bell so you can stay up to date on new Tesla Car World content. Once again, we thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.